Hey guys, David here with a tutorial on how I color graded my short film Landed. Now if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out, the link will be in the description, but let's get right into it. So for this particular project, I wanted a look similar to many post-apocalyptic films, many zombie style thrillers, horror films, things like that. And I went through and looked at a few films for the look I was going for, just something to sort of um, have a benchmark, something to go off of. And I do recommend anyone that is going to start color grading their film to look at uh, different films similar or just think about the look they're going for and then watch films that are along those lines just to get an idea of uh, the whole style you want to color grade your film to, right? Because that's the main idea of color, of color grading. It's finding that aesthetic, that style that you want the film to uh, be portrayed as. So for this one, I was going for a Walking Dead style, and uh, that's what I, I think I was able to come out with. So um, yeah, so yeah, we're going to be doing all this in HitFilm Pro, but uh, the nice thing is many popular editors, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, things like that, will actually be able to do the same kinds of things. And there's nothing um, specific about this one, but this is just my editor of choice, so that's why I'm using it. So. Let's get right into things. Here's our uncolor graded shot. I'm going to toggle invisibility on and off so you guys can see the difference. So there we go. That's what we're going to end up with. And then this is before. So going to the shot, we have all our effects here. Now I'm going to start at the bottom with hue, saturation, and lightness. Now for this, I wanted to um, de desaturate the whole image just a little bit and uh, by doing so, I also wanted to up the red a bit as well, just to have it balance out. I didn't actually want to decrease the saturation of the red colors, so uh, mainly the the blood on the characters, and then a little bit on these cupboards here. I just like the the look, and I wanted to keep that red, that that um, whole bloody look um, prevalent in the film. So we have a bit of a desaturation here. I'm going to toggle it on and off. I don't know if you guys can fully see the difference there, but uh, it'll be a little bit more noticeable as we go along with the effects. So that was the first thing I did. Um, next we have bleach bypass. So what bleach bypass originally was is the skipping either partially or completely of the bleaching process of film stocks for motion pictures. Guys like Roger Deakins used this in the film 1984. And the reason I used it for this film is because I just love the look it gave. It's like a desaturating look that I think really fit the gritty tone I wanted for this film. So it, it really created that nice aesthetic, that nice oh, sort of dark post-apocalyptic feel that I wanted to give people. So that's what I use next. And then I set the amount to 60. It normally is set at 100, which I usually find a little extreme. So I decided to lower it, and uh, this is what the before and after is for the bleach bypass. And silver source on luminosity. So next, I, I used a LUT, or lookup table, which is essentially just changing the parameters of the built-in color profile of the shot and then just changing the algorithms to different color profiles and different sort of parameters. And the whole look it gives is can really be dialed in to give you essentially a great starting point. And this is what I had for this one. I don't think it'll be uh, too much of a surprise. It was uh, a Walking Dead LUT from Film Riot, which you can look at their packs and you can purchase their packs. Um, you can see the link in the description for that. So definitely check that out because they have a lot of really good looks. And this was a great one to get me going um, with what I wanted. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I put that on there and that's giving us uh, a lot more colors and uh, more of that stylized look I wanted. So anyways, after that, let's look at the curves. Um, curves are always really helpful when you're doing anything from color grading to color correction to just little tweaks here and there between shots. Um, and then for this one, I definitely took a different approach from my other shots because like I mentioned of that, uh, let me just uh, turn this off, because of that light that was coming in, giving our image a bit of a washed out look, um, I use curves to sort of combat that. So if we toggle this on, you can see what it's doing. It's not too extreme, but it's definitely there, especially in the highlights. 
And uh, yeah, the main idea of this was just lowering the top end and uh, decreasing the bottom. And uh, you can see that better here on the character's shirt. If we turn this on, it's, uh, it's sort of clearing things up a bit, uh, you know, allowing things to just look a little bit more natural without that, uh, that haze that we had before. So if we look at what's going on here under curves, this whole line represents from the top brightest parts of the image to the bottom the darkest parts of the image. So it gives you a good idea of what exactly you're tweaking about the shot because it's all laid out nicely here. So I lowered the top end a bit and uh, that gave it this really nice more natural feeling look almost you know mimicking a camera that had a higher dynamic range than I used which if you wanted to know I used the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera so it's already a solid camera when it comes to dy dynamic range but I wanted nothing to look overexposed and detailed to be as prevalent as possible so that's why I lowered the top end a bit and then a tiny bit here at the bottom which which will really just was to combat some of that that haze that washed out look that we had and again before and after you can see just how much it's doing so that was what we did for curves so going up to what we have next is sharpen um, this is pretty self-explanatory you know it's creating a more crisp image and the idea of using this was to bring out some of that natural grain that was in the shot if you can see from uh, before and after. I like the whole look it gave. I felt like it uh, created the whole film look, you know, the classical example of, a, of emulating a film reel. I think it gave that look a little bit better and then just made everything stand out a little bit more, which is what I want, wanted for that. And for strength, I had it at 50. And feature size, it's at 0.5. So that gives me that... Uh, Nice look, not too dramatic, and uh, definitely adding to things a bit there. So, lastly, before the white balance was film grain, and again, fairly self-explanatory. That's just adding a little bit of grain on top of there, just adding to that gritty feel that um, you know that also older feel that I wanted for the film as well. Considering the film takes place in 1985, I wanted some film grain on there just to sort of uh, yeah, reinforce that, um, that whole look. So that's what we have for uh, the main effects. Other than that, I used white balance just to get everything set properly just in terms of color temperature and all that i thought this was just a little bit too too cool too blue so i use white balance to to counter that and then that brings more you know warmth into the actors faces onto the boards there that were like this nice kind of a, a light orange beige almost tone so that brought more warmth into the scene which is ultimately what I wanted. Um, I didn't want things to look too cool or anything. I wanted, you know, natural colors for the most part. So, so yeah, that's that. That is how I color graded this shot, and which is essentially the same for all the shots that I've done. I'll show a couple more because there are little differences, but that's how I, I treated this one here. And again, we can do a before and after here, just so uh, you guys can see that again. So this is before and then after. So. Once again, before and after, we get the whole look we're going for. So here's the next shot we'll look at. This is before, and then this is after. Again, before, after. You can really see that what's going on here, the difference being made. But I won't be too in-depth, as what I did was largely the same as before. But um, yeah, we'll start toggling on effects, and I'll just go over some key details here. So we got our LUT. So what I'm sure you'll notice here is everything's looking a little bit overexposed. And when I shot this scene, I made sure that we still had detail. So nothing was actually being lost when I shot this and nothing was actually being completely blown out. So I was able to just go in the editor and then use curves to bring all that back. And as you can see, um, it, looks, it looks perfectly exposed here. We still have detail in the darkest parts and the brightest parts of the shot 
and um, yeah, it just really helped things overall. And for curves specifically, what I did is I brought down the middle tones for the most part. I left the top end and bottom end alone. And the reason for that is because um, we were able to still have detail in those areas. So to change that would have jeopardized some of that. And I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to do that. Obviously I wanted to keep as much of that dynamic range as I could. And that's something the black magic camera is great for as well as color grading. I was surprised at how well the camera handled different things. I threw at it in the color grading process. So, so that was really cool to see. And that's what we did for this, uh, for this part here. All right. That's the curves there. And then everything else is the same. We have our sharpen as you can see there. A difference being made nicely and then we have our film grain and then of course we have our white balance which um, I found it was just a little bit too orange for me a little bit too warm I wanted to uh, cool things down a little bit with that so yeah that's this shot here fairly brief but uh, but uh, I hope that uh, clarifies things for you as to how I approach different shots in this film and again we can go before and after, before, and after. All right, so here's the last shot we're gonna be having a look at today. This is before and after, before and after. So as you can tell, it's obviously more of a night scene, night shot, so the approach I took for this was a little bit different, and uh, yeah, so let's get right into that. We have hue, saturation, and lightness, just how we had it before. We have our bleach bypass, this time with an uh, increase in brightness. And you can see the difference being made there. Reason I decided to up this is whenever you're playing around with bleach bypass with this slider here, um, essentially the amount is going to also determine how underexposed it gets because bleach bypass always lowers the amount of exposure in your shot. So to combat that, I wanted to increase the brightness because, uh, you know, help the shot, give it a bit more light because, uh, you know, we were definitely struggling for daylight in this scene when it was shot. So that's why I upped the brightness there. Going along, we have our walking dead LUT. So that really darkened things up as you can see there. Again, I can toggle this on and off for you. And of course, giving it that, um, you know, aesthetic look those colors that I wanted and then we have curves now for this one I actually kept it pretty subtle of course you can notice the difference but if we look at what's actually going on here all it really was is an increase in the darker areas and a slight decrease in the brighter areas so we can, uh, we can go before and afters here so you can see what's going on there You know, I think it uh, it's subtle, but it really does make a nice difference, allowing us to notice their faces more. So going up, we have our sharpen, same as how I had it before, giving it that nice crisp look and bringing out that grain that was already in our shot that without it just sort of uh, muddles the image. But with it, it looks like um, it's uh, it's a full grain stock that we used which I really liked. I love it when the, the camera is able to produce a very filmic style of grain. And that's what the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera can do so well. And uh, so if you're a bit of a grain connoisseur, like I would say I am, <laughs> having the sharpening in your shots can really help uh, bring that out nicely. And that's what we did for this. And then if you'll notice something, I actually didn't use film grain for this shot. And the reason was, is because we were shooting at a later time of day, there was less light. I had to combat that by upping the exposure on my camera. And then that brought in a little bit more of that digital grain. So using film grain on top of the sharpening would have just been too much. So to get everything to uh, sort of fit nicely, I just left that out. Just use sharpen and that's why it's not in there. And then lastly, of course, we have our white balance. And uh, again, for this, I was just bringing back um, a bit of those natural tones, color in the actor's faces and that sort of thing, giving it more of an, an even um, color tone. But one thing I will say is it's actually not completely set on pure white. I did want it to be a bit of a blue tint and uh, 
just not as blue as how I had it. So that's, that's what we have there. So going back here, I can show you this before and after, and you guys can see everything that's being done there and the whole final look. All right, guys, there you have it. That is how I color graded my short film landed. I really hope it was beneficial. I hope you were able to take away some pointers and gain insight into color grading your next project. But if you did enjoy, make sure to hit that like button, comment what you want to see next, and subscribe to stay updated. All right, guys, take care.